Well, Stevie Chadwick. Um, yes, Mr Chair, part two of this state sector management bill, as I referred to in the um, last reading, was is the bit that really does concern us here um, in government and in the opposition. And I think what is very clear here is that Cabinet ministers that are in government have dropped the ball, actually, on an incredible, important aspect of our cultural and heritage sector. In fact, I've just heard my um, colleague talking about this shift of um, where do we plonk the National Library, what do we do with the Alexander Turnbull Library. Uh, it would have probably fitted better in a structure in uh, Creative New Zealand, actually, and um, not sitting in just a big, huge um, government department of internal affairs. And I think uh, Minister Nathan Guy, who's sort of looking at me, thinking, gosh, that might have been quite a good idea, actually. Um, <laughs> why, why didn't we think of that? But at the financial review um, of uh, the Department of Internal Affairs, uh, I asked the new chief executive, and he's new and he's keen and he's determined to provide improved customer services, more efficient services, accountable to the public. But he looked a bit perplexed about why it was there. And I think the justification that we heard on the Select Committee was that you're getting this new uh, information technology transformation happening in government departments. And because uh, the library and archives are going to go to digitalisation and the new technologies, it was the new technologies uh, emergence that drove this decision, which is simply nuts. And I reiterate that if Minister Finlayson had have been um, watching all these Cabinet papers that were going through the hands of Minister Ryle and Nathan Guy, he would have stood up because he knows and he would have advocated and said, stop, stop. This, you're making a fundamental error in this component. And, and Minister Finlayson has dropped the ball on our heritage and cultural sector and the importance of the repository of national collections. Look, Mr Speaker, the National Library was established in 1965. It brought together the General Assembly Library, the Alexander Turnbull Library and the Na National Library. And some of these functions in New Zealand had great historical significance and dated back until the early 1850s. And what have we done in part two here? We seek assurances that the role of the National Librarian, the delegations of the National Librarian, yes, the continuation of the Alexander Turnbull Library will all continue. But for goodness sake, the minister in the chair knows how ministries work, and this is becoming a super ministry. These incredibly important functions that should be standalone functions are put into third tier um, divisions of this new monster uh, internal affairs with no uh, lines there other than if, if um, my colleague Grant Robertson's amendment uh, is passed today and I urge members of the House to at least consider that, member, uh, that amendment uh, that allows the um, chief archivist and the librarian, we're talking about the librarian here, the chief librarian, to have reporting lines to the minister. Open up those doors so they can take those very um, unique elements of the library and the National Library Service, not just through a CEO that has his door open, but for goodness sake to the minister direct. And I think there are very substantial am amendments that we need to look at. I, I do believe also that National's forgotten, uh, and this issue came up and is in our minority report, about the damage to the reputation of the Alexander Turnbull Library. You know, the holdings of that library are private collections, private collections, New Zealanders that had a great love of books and our history and our collected stories donated to the Turnbull Library and they're now going to sit under the auspices of the Department of Internal Affairs. That is absolutely simply crazy and it defies logic. Actually, the public of New Zealand, and Judith Collins laughs, but I'm sure in her family histories there will be people in her family that probably have some...
Mr Speaker. There I will call, be people... I call, Mr Chair. I call the Honourable yeah. Stevie Chapman. Uh, there will be members of her family that would like to have the confidence to know that if they donate collections, great collections of books to the Alexander Turnbull Library, for goodness sake, they're not going to be under the management and the, and the, um, the uh, executive function of the chief executive of the Department of Internal Affairs. It is absolutely stupid. I know that what happened here, the government looked for efficiencies, they looked for economies of scale, they looked for digitalisation opportunities, because there is going to need to be a lot of digitalisation of a lot of our material held. But that's not where this department and where the library and the role of the chief librarian should sit. It is an insult to those professionals. No wonder those professionals who have great dignity and intelligence um, feel insulted by what's happening uh, to them, to their passion uh, for collections of great significance, uh, to find themselves just sitting in what is an awful name, Department of Internal Affairs. Department of Internal Affairs. What does that say about telling our stories, our unique identity as New Zealand, both to children in the country and to those internationally? Go to the Department of Internal Affairs when you come to New Zealand. You know, we've got a national... Oh, there's an Alexander Turnbull Library run by the Department of Internal Affairs. It is an insult, and no wonder those professionals there quietly said... Uh, and, and uh, making decisions about their own future, which will delight Tony Ryle, because he does want these um, vacancies to occur in the name of efficiency. He forgets what he's losing with institutional memory, institutional experience, and amazingly qualified people who are seen internationally as great leaders of managing such repositories of information. This is a shambles, uh, Mr Speaker. This is what happened in Canada, actually. When you looked at international examples, Canada said, and the Minister should listen to this, they said that when this happened with a merger in Canada, because you always look to see where is it happening and where is another great idea international, that there was a decline in services as a result of the merger in Canada. Did the minister really look and see the impact of this? No, he didn't. He was actually beaten by Minister Tony Ryle who said, this is what we're going to do. I've got, have I got the idea for you? We're going to just make a super ministry here. Now, who should we suck into this ministry called the Department of Internal Affairs, not Creative New Zealand or the Ministry of Arts, Culture and Heritage, which is where they should have sat? If, no, he didn't. He didn't advocate at all. Th yeah, but don't worry, because, because here we are in part two. We're looking after the delegations of the National Librarian. We're looking after the functions of the National Idea, uh, Librarian. Clause 27, we've got the continuation of the Alexander Turnbull Library. Don't worry, New Zealanders, it's still going to be there. Great third tier in the Department of Internal Affairs. What an insult. What an insult to the Chief Librarian of the Alexander Turnbull Library. I'm afraid this, this bill is going to result... Yes, it is. 28. It's an insult. This bill has resulted in a deep vein of resentment against this government and their high-handed and arrogant way they view... Um, public servants as just bureaucrats that you can shuffle around on the decks. Don't worry about it. For $165,000 saving every year, have we got the answer for you for the super service on archival material and library material? It's a disgrace. It's insulted professionals in New Zealand. It won't result in a better service for the public. It subsumes those that have developed independence and professional integrity into a super ministry that is going to have a very, very negative impact on this government when it comes to the elections next year. Thank you, Mr Chair. I call Gareth Hughes. Uh, we've heard a couple of